time to work on the longest lasting, most powerful truck. The truck that built America, folks. The Ford F-250. It's got the big 5.4. I don't know if any of those statements are true, but uh, this one needs front axle U-joints. And they are seized up so tight that I can't turn the steering wheel. That's as far as I can turn it. I'm kind of weak. If we start it, we can turn it with the power steering, but it groans and snaps and crunches. So we got to take the wheel off, the brakes, the hub. And this lockout hub is junk. Uh, this one is partially engaging and making lots of racket, I assume because of the seize up joint, probably busted some of this jiggly bit. So we've got a new lockout hub for it. New axle U joints, a new big seal. We've got some new brake stuff if we need it. So we should have everything. So let's get after it. Mm -hmm. Oh, she's a crusty one. There's one of the bolts we have to get to. There's another one. Any more up here? You have to be able to take the speed sensor off. Oh, here's another bolt here. So, we need to kind of dig out the bolts around everything here. It's probably gonna be dirty before we go home. Uh, we need to take, we'll get these bolts out and get ready for taking the bearing off, I suppose. And that's a couple of twist sockets because these are no longer a size. Well, that one came right out, that's good. I think they used to be eight millimeter, or five sixteen. so we're gonna look at that. And there was salt. Gosh, shoe fi. Well, small fella. We'll leave that bolt right in there. See if we can't get this other one, see if that's the same size. Oh, look at that. Oh, look at that, that one came right out too. See if we can get underneath this little fellow without breaking it. Should be a little Christmas tree fastener. There's that one. We've got one here on the frame. Give that a little poke and a flick. Maybe. Like that instead, how's that sound? Connector should live right up behind here. Oh, there she is. Okay, good. That's the hardest part of the whole job. Not really. I'm kidding. It's the easiest part of the whole job. Actually, the easiest part is pulling it inside. So we'll leave that sitting on the side now. We'll get our tools to remove the caliper. Let that hang by the hose. Just great. Got it. There's one. There's two. Oh, she had a little rust on it, that's why. Imagine that. Now we'll grab the BFS. Short for big fat screwdriver. <laughs> Come on guy, what's this your first day? Oh, I know what this feels like. This feels like it's got little dongers on the uh, back side of the brake pads. We're gonna try to compress our pistons slightly if we can. Can't really get in on anything on this fella. Well, we need to push our pistons back because if you just go yanking, you're gonna get in trouble. You're gonna be in big trouble. You're gonna break the pistons. I'm gonna sit, see if I can stick the little screwdriver in between the piston and the pad here. Oh, 
and get the piston to go back a little bit because they must have little ears on them that are catching on the pistons. One way to bend a screwdriver there, fella, but we've got nowhere to put this thing. We need something to take up space. Let's see. Like me in school, <laughs> taking up space. At least that's what my teachers told me. Right before they told me I'd never mount to anything. Ah! That was just a lucky guess on their part. We get her now? Get her now, boys? Yes, yeah, sir. No casualties. Yeah, see, it's got little uh, dimples here on the back of the pads. Come on, man. See on the back of the pads, little rivets that hold the uh, shims on. They don't stick up much, but if you try to force the piston past those, you'll break the edge off the piston if they're phenolic. That's French for plastique. <laughs> it may not be French, but. So these appear to have metal pistons, or at least metal faces, I don't know. Sometimes phenolic pistons just have the metal on the outside, but these may actually be real metal pistons. But in either case, we didn't damage them, which is great. I'm gonna make sure the piston goes back in here first. See if we got our bracket bolts off. We'll have to use a bar here. Motherfucker, there we go, yeah, boy. Okay, that was a little snug. Not too bad, though. Not too bad. We'll grab the Ugga Dugga gun. It's usually easier if you can turn the wheel, but unfortunately we can't. Well, I suppose if I wanted to go out and start it, we could, but we'll struggle. We'll struggle. Got one pin that's good. And one pin that's locked up. We'll have to fix that too, I guess. Slip that little guy off. Now she's a little chunky on the inside, so it's getting a new rotor. Oh, T27. T27, where are you? you? Don't get to use the old T27 too often, do you? No, sir. Okay, there's our little screws. Nice little screwdriver. Take that little guy out. I don't know what's chowdered up in it, but it sounds like a baby rattle. <laughs> Reach down inside here. Why I'm blind right now. Uh, look at that fella. I'm probably gonna have to get to a light. Yeah, we got a light a snap ring in here. A lot of, a lot of metal dust in here too. <laughs> Must be from that hub, whatever was coming apart in that. Let's see here. Hey, what's up, Eric? Let's see, I just cracked that baby loose. So there's my snap ring I was after. I put light where you can't see it. Makes for a better video. Like I said, there's lots of metal bits in here as you can see stuck to the magnet I assume it's whatever's inside the hub that's falling to pieces because there's nothing else really inside of here this is empty there is a, a small roller bearing which we'll see but I assume uh, like I say probably that hub eating itself apart well to be honest with you folks I'm not so sure we're gonna get this truck done today it's somehow between five seconds ago that last clip and this clip about six hours has passed I think we started this truck this morning well, now it's the end of the day. Mother lover! Alright, this one's... I was gonna say, that one's pulling out the whole stud, but... We got her to crack. But 
sometimes that is how the cookie crumbles. I don't even know what I was doing. Let's see here. Kind of sucks that you can't turn it. Well, it kind of a little bit. Uh, about that much. <laughs> we might have to actually start it up here, folks. And I don't even know if you guys are in frame. You kind of are. We might have to start it up to get in here on this top one. We'll see. Oh, there we go. I felt her go. Let me uh, come around. We come around through here now. Get this bearing out. We'll be home free. Mother lover. Ah, it's turning the whole dang stud. I don't have enough uh, power in this thing. Oh, we do. And the nut came off. Hooray! Winner, winner. We'll get this one. That one's on the ground, but we'll get the other two. Classic swivel socket. Probably a bad idea. Swivel socket and a flex head ratchet. What could go wrong? Is all four of these nuts. Oh, that's right. I think last we were uh, looking inside there, we seen all the metal shards. Give her a little tippy tat. Oh, friggin' jerk. Kitlin shield, which is pretty well paper thin. These usually come off pretty easy. Just like so. Why do they come off so easy? Well, that's a great question. That's because they have an O-ring here that seals them. And then of course a big giant seal on the inside. Oh, this is pretty thin. Get the shield off here, set that to the side. I'm gonna go set this little guy down. Now right, you don't wanna get yourself a little screwdriver slash pry bar. About a five footer works pretty well. We're gonna get right behind this joint. And push, push, push. And out she comes. You can use a smaller bar, but I think Ben Franklin once said, if I had a lever big enough, I could move the world. Might have been Abe Lincoln. But it's true, no matter who said it. Now that's a stiffy, look at that, all the way around. Big stiffy. Reminds me of my old high school nickname. Rocco, that's what they used to call me. <laughs> so we're gonna come in this seal right here. This thing's pretty well pooched. You can see. Be crusty. Oh, miss. Ho ho! Shot that at you at a high rate of speed. And what we can do. What we can do now. We'll plug up this hole with Mr. Hanky. Then you're gonna wanna get your classic cleaning uppy tool. If anybody remembers the cleaning uppy tool, aka cutoff wheel with no guard. And then uh, let me go get some glasses so I can see. And then we're gonna very carefully whizzy wheel in here. Oh. <laughs> 
we just want to clean that edge up, you know what I mean? Know what I mean, jelly bean? No doubt, Uncle Trout. <laughs> Whoa, whoa, dude. <laughs> Looks good, boys. Looks good. Come in with a little Mr. Flippy Flappy. Give me a little Flippy Flap. Perfect. Perfect. And then I guess we'll leave that in there for right now. We'll. We'll clean this up a little bit, even though these are usually pretty clean. Oh, you're a good hole polisher. Yes, you are. Shame. We just don't want to knock this down into our new stuff once we get in here and start cranking on it. Oh, I can't believe that's almost the second time I've almost forgotten that. Get this little twirl in here. Usually we put grease in these things. Helps the seal slide in better. Helps keep it from seizing up when you gotta do it again in a year or two. They're pretty well junk here in New York, so you, you end up doing lots of U joints in the front of these things. Nobody ever greases them. It's half the problem. The other half of the problem is salt. And the other half of the problem is the taxes. It's all three halves of the problem that we have here. Okay. Oh, I love the smell of break clean. Woo, get some of that. <laughs> Cosby sauce. I'll get yourself one of these. You can buy these aftermarket. I find, however, the OEM fits better than the Napa one. It's uh, like the tin shield on it. It seems sturdier or something. They're about twice the cost as the CR ones, which, I mean, you wouldn't think they'd have a lot of tooling to make these little guys, but. Seems like they all come from the same place. Now get yourself a piece of pipe that fits that, or in my case, an inner tie rod end tool, which seems to fit it just lovely. Okay, and then get a hammer. And ram it home till it hits bottom. And that's it, you're in. You're in, you're in all the way, fella. Now for the next 45 minutes, we'll be doing this little deal. Uh, let's see. Thought we had another hammer out here, fella. Guess we just got that one. Am I missing one? I don't think so. This guy's a loser. idiot okay now we need to get our clips off come on baby well you're gonna make me get aggressive Only semi-aggressive, I guess. There's one clip, and we'll get this one here. See if we can't get her. Where does it start? Start right up in there somewhere. Oh, there it goes. Did you see it? It's going. There's two clips. I'm gonna scrape around in here. 
See if we find another one. It must be bottomed out on this side. Usually they're a little further off the notch on one side or the other. I can't see, but we're going to do the poke and hope, I call it. I think we got it. Poke and hope. It's like doing it with the lights off. Going in blind. Here we go. There's three. Where's this one hiding? Oh, that's how you want to be. That's how you want to be. Mmm. Ha! I won you, mother lover. Persistence always wins. I don't know if that's a true statement or who said it. Pretty sure it's not true because I was pretty persistent with my dad a few times growing up and I lost. I remember them days. We gotta find us uh, something here. We're gonna go with a 13 16 variety. We're gonna cheat on this one a little bit. We gotta be a little careful. Not like walking on thin ice careful but just mindful we'll call it. We're gonna use ball joint press. That's the OTC. And uh, you gotta be careful because when you're pushing on these little guys, you can bend the yoke. Like if this little sucker's not coming and that yoke's just getting squashed down, well that'll put you in a bad place. So using ball joint press is not always the best idea. So give it a little push like that. Don't push much harder than that, though. And give it a little tap and she'll pop. See? It popped it. Some people on YouTube wonder why I hit the end of the ball joint press with a hammer. It's solid. Well, trust me, folks. All right? I know it's solid. But if you just keep squeezing with that ball joint press, you're going to wish you didn't. You're gonna wake up one day and be like, man, I wish I didn't do that. We've all said that, haven't we? This guy has, I'll tell you that much. See, it's your typical lack of lubrication. We're gonna give her a little push, push, push the other way. This ball joint press is heavy. Or I'm a win. Or both. Whoa, 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 whoa. You got her all cockeyed, dude. Now you're up the creek. What an idiot. See, that's the problem. Yeah. Frickin' big ol' hurry. Come on. Switch gears on me, fella. Now the problem might be if I put a little groove in it and no, you can't just tip it out. It just never makes it all the way. This is one of them ones that'll trick you. You know, you'll think you'll make it, but it doesn't make it. And then you hit it with a hammer, like, come on, go. Keep going. And it doesn't go. Try 
excited to do a little tune there for us. She looks straight now. Frick. I don't, I don't want to mess it up because because I don't. Here's a guy who should be working on a workbench instead of a flimsy cart. I told you this is going to take all day. Idiot. Man, it's going all kinds of crooked at me. What you need to do? You need to turn off that camera and just do your job. That's what you need to do. You know what I mean? Make sure. Yeah, put a, put a little booger mark in that sucker. Nobody likes little booger marks. Let's try this. We're either gonna get it or we're gonna get it so top that nobody's gonna wanna work with it. lubricated needles again it just doesn't fit here who wants to see if we can screw up both sides this guy does I know, you gotta push on it straight, you got it offset. I hear you, dude, I hear you. We're dead in the middle. Okay. Almost dead in the middle. Oh yeah, first try. First try. Sucking back in there a little. Thought I could knock it out. Hit my finger. Come on. You're not being super friendly, dude. I might have to go stick this one in the vise, give it a squeeze and tap it off. There, got he. While I was over the vise, I straightened this one up so we can, we can, how many hammers does a guy need? Let's be honest here. <laughs> That's like anything. Next thing you know, your old toolbox is empty. Yeah, I just tapped this one back straight so we can finish running her out. I do it on the bike, but over on the bench, but my bench is dirty and you guys will get all judgy on me. 
I don't think you will, but let's be honest, I'm just being lazy. We'll get Mr. Wizzy. Come here, Mr. Wizzy. Give it a little hole polish. Oh yeah. Yes, ma'am. Give her one of those. Get your cleaning up your tools. You're gonna want glasses. These things have a tendency to fly apart. It can stick you in the eye or the jugger. And that's because it's a cutoff wheel and we're using it in entirely the wrong fashion. But it works great. Yeah, definitely uh, don't do this at home, but yeah, you're welcome for the tip at the same time. You guys know that song? It was Merry Christmas. Gosh. Let's find a U joint. It's a classic UJ374 from the PRC. From the PRC all the way to the PRNY. Like everything else in this world. Speaking of joints, yesterday was 420. Just big holiday. New York now. Big holiday. We're gonna take off our caps. And wipe off our grease. Ew. We're gonna set them somewhere down here. Because you know God dang well what's gonna happen. I won't even tell you. You just know. As far as your orientation is shaft, these are not made as an assembly. All right, let's just be honest. They're not balanced, so before you get on me about not marking anything, doesn't really matter, dude. It's not a drive shaft. Well, kind of is, but kind of is, but kind of isn't. Then we're gonna give it a, a nice little push. Get up in the middle of that joint. Torque setting number three. Oh. Push her all the way through. Not all the way, but most of the way. And flip it over. Make sure you didn't get any dirt on it. If you did, wipe it with your dirty finger like, got it. Man. Stick your other cap on there. See, we got some dirt on that one, which we will clean off. You don't worry about that. I know Tiger Tool makes a U-joint pulling apparatus. I see that down there in the comment section. She's almost home. Almost home. I think that's a country song. Mm. Ah, got it. Woo! That's a great one. Make sure it clips in the right spot. And then just give her a little gentle nudge. I like to call it a friendly reminder. 
Make sure your clip's gonna fit and it will. Push, push, push. The no mercy reversey. Now you joints gonna be stiff. I'm talking mm, like it's been two weeks. Give her a little whack here. And look at that, now she's loose. But you gotta chant. If you don't chant, it won't work. You're gonna wanna get Mr. Hanky. Wipe off the dirt. Oh, ho, 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 ho. she's nice. Put Mr. Hanky down there. Like so. Get your cap all lined up. Oh yeah. Don't go too far. All the way, but not too far. Mm. With one power grunt. <clears throat> but yeah, seriously, if you if you haven't had if you don't have much experience. with using a ball joint press or a press to push out your joints. You gotta be really careful. You will frig up that yoke like ain't nobody's business. And we ain't done yet, so I can, I can still frig it up. You know me. I could have loosened up the force screw, but who's got time for that? Push, click. I'll just give it a friendly reminder. Hi, Luna. Hi, kitty, kitty. Come here. Come here. Make sure we got groove width. We do. And push. There we go. And there, we're all done. Except she's gonna have a little stiffy in that direction, you see? Floppy this way, not that way. Remember the chant? Ready? Oh, it went quick. We must have had the right chant right off the bat. You know what I'm saying? Now she's Mr. Floppy in all directions. Come here, kitty kitty. Come here, Luna. Come here. I didn't know where you were. Yeah, I didn't know where you were. One more time. Come here. Come here. Oh, stop it. You know how to use the front door? Come here. Nope. You're gonna go hide under the car. Okay, never mind. 